Lee, and welcome to the Circle of Hecker. I'm Lady Amaris. Now, I've been watching a few videos here and there, and it seems that a lot of people really want to see what other witches have, have purchased from different stores. So I thought, well, how about I give it a go? Um, I've gone to two stores um, the other day uh, just to buy some stuff, and um, I thought I would show you what I've got and um, let you know about the store that I that I went to and just what my experience was. So the first store that I went to was called Celestial Realms and it is in Victoria Park in Western Australia. And uh, I've been there before and I enjoy going there. It is a, um, a nice little store and um, I'll put the details down below um, of their website so that you can go there as well. Um, when I go to a store, I just like to just walk around and, and I'm, I'm quite um, taken in by uh, the feel of the store. So if I go into a store and it feels like all, they, all they're after is the sale, um, where, to the point where I almost look like a dollar sign as I walk in the door, uh, it's very uncomfortable. and. Um, I, it, it, it's all about the vibe really. So when you go into a store, if you feel comfortable, if it feels, feels a little bit magical and mystical and, and, um, and the store owners kind of leave you alone a little bit just to, just to let you have a look around and, and um, get the pieces that you actually want without, without hounding you and, and uh, telling you about every single piece because they want the sale. Um, yeah, so it's all about the vibe. I've walked into quite a few stores um, that have had that, and also ones that just feel just icky. Um, and uh, I haven't bought anything from those stores, and I've just I've just walked out very quickly um, because yeah, you don't you don't want to you don't want to bring that into your house that that icky vibe. Um, from from a store that you've you've purchased something from. So Celestial Realms is the first one that I've uh, got a few things from. Uh, so I'll just show you. Um, they have quite a few things. They have lots of um, crystals. So this is the first one that I've got here, which is a sel selenite wand, which I thought was quite nice. And then you can see how the light catches that. I think. I think most people like selenite for the simple fact that it is quite, quite magical when you when you look at it and you you twist it around in the light. So um, that's my little wand. I like the fact that it's got a, a rounded rounded end. Let's see that, and it's got a pointed end. So it's kind of like it's got the male and the female. So the female and the masculine pointy end. Uh, so it's embodying both energies in that that one piece, and it almost looks like a pencil that you can you can write your uh, celestial your celestial uh, wants and and needs and have them uh, manifest on the on the physical plane. So that's that one there, and they have quite a few stones uh, and wands, quite a few selenite. Things, so lots of um, selenite uh, lamps and um, quite a few um, um, rock salt lamps as well. Um, the next one that I've got was peacock ore. Now I love peacock ore because it's just so shiny and different colours. These ones are this one's very green in colour. Um, I think you can probably pick up a little bit of pink. Here and there, peacock ore comes in, as you could imagine, lots of different colours, and it's very shiny. And let's see, we can get a little closer. There we go. Look at that. Now, peacock ore is uh, to do with. It's supposed to align all of your chakras, and I say that's because all of the colours are present in peacock ore. It also helps to um, stimulate and align your physical and spiritual and etheric 
energy bodies. And it resonates a lot with the third eye and it helps you to reconnect and rediscover ancient esoteric knowledge and awakens that inner sight, which I thought was quite nice. Um, I read that afterwards, not before I grabbed the, the stones, but uh, maybe I need a little bit of uh, ancient knowledge awakening. Everyone can do with a bit of that. Okay. And then I also got some quartz crystal. These are the small little ones, and these are really good for little spells and putting into um, what's the vernacular now, mojo bags or just little spell bags. Um, so we've got these here. Now I like quartz crystals, the clear quartz crystals, because if you think of them as a, um, a, a CD, a blank CD, or even just like a little, um, a little thumb drive where it's blank and then you program that crystal um, and put the information into that crystal. Now that crystal can then be cleansed again and reprogrammed. So it is a, a, a tool that can be used over and over and over again because it's almost like a blank slate. It's a, a recording device that can be used over and over and over again. Uh, and they're nice and small so that they can be put into little bags. Um, and also little smaller shards or even one maybe this, this small can then be um, crushed and uh, put into different powders or different, different uses, um, uses that you would, you would have for, um, for quartz crystal. Again, programming that, that crystal with the intent that you want. So nice and sparkly. And their, their prices are quite reasonable. Um, there will be a few things which you'll go, whoa! But um, I think that's the same with, uh, with most stores. They will have their, their economical bits and pieces and their, their uh, not so economical. Um, I also like, as you can see, these are not, not tumbled. They're, not, um, they're, they're rough. And I prefer some of the rough ones to the tumbled stones because I find that some um, stones are, um, what can I say, made up stones. You have some clear quartz, even, even glass that's been coloured and put in and, and tumbled and then called, called something or been replaced for a certain... Um, a certain stone. So um, like citrine. Uh, citrine uh, can also be um, faked by heating up um, amethyst and uh, that makes it a little, little more orange in colour and looks like a citrine but it's not actually citrine. It is, it is a, a heated up amethyst. Um, and then just various other stones which if you're not really into stones and know a lot about them you will buy a few of them and then you just realize that this doesn't feel right it feels fake it feels like glass and then you find out if you do a little research yes it is so it's always nice to maybe have a bit of a feel of the stone if it doesn't feel like it's got any energy it probably hasn't because it's been manufactured so it's always nice to, to, to have a little bit of a research, but also have a little bit of a, use your intuition. Okay, a couple of other things that I got. I've got some incense. Now this is called Three Kings. Now they have three different types of Three Kings. Uh, and this one is the Petrus um, version. So I haven't smelt that one before, so I'll, I'll probably after this how give it a little bit of a go and I'll let you know in, a, in another video how it went um, so three kings is usually quite a nice smell and funnily enough I didn't realize until I got home I got some uh, some charcoal blocks now any good witch will go through charcoal blocks um, like water and um, I found that some charcoal blocks light better than others. Now these ones here 
um, of some of the, the, the better ones um, that seem to light very well. I've found, unfortunately, that there's, there's a brand, it, it escapes me, but it, it, it um, reports to be fast lighting. And I found that it doesn't actually seem to light at all. So it does the complete opposite to fast lighting. It doesn't light at all. It's very, it's very um, frustrating. Uh, so charcoal blocks should be in every witch's kit. Um, and the other thing that should be in every witch's kit, um, sorry about the noise, are candles. Now I've got these here, I've got a selection of quite a few. Now these are quite small, they're just small little candles so they can fit in my hand. You can see just I don't have large hands, so I have kind of normal size hands. Uh, so you can just see how small they are. Now these would be, uh, these on a good day, I would say there would be not even five minutes. Um, I may be wrong, but just how I go through candles, I would say that that would be a very short burning time. Um, maybe not five minutes, but um, not five hours, definitely. So I've got um, some black. Now you always want to make sure that your black candles, let's just have a little bit of a look here. Yeah, that your black candles are actually black. The last thing you want is to get a black candle and find that it's actually a white candle that's been dipped into black because then you're not actually having a black candle. When you start burning that candle, it'll end up being a grey candle. And that's and if you're using black candles because you want to do some kind of um, banishing work, um, so black would absorb that, uh, that negative energy and the white candle would repel it. But if you're burning the candle and it turns out to be a grey candle, then that is, that's a neutral, um, neutral colour between black and white. So then you are, you're not actually doing a lot with that energy, you're just, it, it is just stagnating. So if you want to make sure that your candles are actually the true colours and they're not just white candles dipped in the colour. The same goes with your, with your gold candles. Let's just have a look, I didn't check. Here, uh, as you can see, no. This one here, you can see, isn't a true gold candle. So if you can see there, it is actually a white candle that has been dipped. Now, gold, actual real gold candles are quite hard to find. Now, I find that if you use little birthday candles, little gold birthday candles, they are pretty well all gold because they are very thin and small. Um, but most of the time to get a true gold candle you would have to make it yourself. So you can see that that one isn't a true gold candle. Some of the other ones I think are okay. Again if you're using a red candle, so this one here is a true red candle, that's fine. So if you're doing a red candle and you want to add a little bit of oomph into your spell, um, give it a little bit of fiery red passion, or if you've got, say, you know, a love spell where you want a little bit of extra passion in there and you find that it's a white candle that's been dipped in red, then that's going to change to a pink, which will be more of a, a loving, um, um, a little bit more passive. It's not as as strong and and, um, and um, I wouldn't say aggressive but passionate um, as that you would like if you were actually using a red candle so just be quite mindful of the candles that you use and what colors are, are there and what colors will that actually eventually turn into when they start to burn because uh, if you're not too worried about the fact that you have a little bit of fiery passion um, and then it turns into that loving that loving relationship um, that you would have with a with a pink candle, then that would be quite um, quite a good way to go. But if you're wanting the red candle for that passion, for that uh, that little oomph in your spell, then uh, make sure that it's a, a totally red candle. Okay, so that was all of those things. Oh no, one more thing. Almost forgot. 
Now this one here, I thought was quite nice. I used to have one um, where I lived before. I've, I've moved, it was a couple of months now, but um, where I used to live and um, I thought I'd get another one for the house that I'm in now. And this one is a moon frog or a moon toad. Now every good witch should have a toad. <laughs> so I make sure that I have one. So I'll just take him out of the thing. And here we have our little moon toad. I'm not sure if you can see him. He's got wonderful little eyes. And they're, they're silver in colour and all white. So you can get different colours, but I liked the white one because it just reminded me of the moon. So my moon toad. Now, as I said, all good witches are renowned for having toads. And um, if you come from Queensland, um, this is probably very similar to a cane toad. Um, but toads were used by witches uh, because they are poisonous and their poison would be on their back. So when they became threatened, that poison would, would, would leak out, obviously, because if you were attacked by a predator, the predator would um, bite into the flesh or, or, or take the flesh and, um, and be poisoned and, and spit you out. Um, but witches would actually use toads um, for the poison um, by um, licking the toad or, or extracting the poison and using that um, for um, their um, hallucinogens. So some of their flying ointment may have contained a bit of toad venom. And these little guys always have their coin in their mouth. So I thought that was quite cute. So that's going to have a nice place in my house and uh, bringing prosperity, but also connecting with the moon energy. There's one other little, uh, little piece of information that uh, came with the toad is that the toad is linked to the moon due to its transformation during phases of the moon. It is associated with longevity and wealth. It is common to see a toad or a frog statue with a coin in its mouth depicting prosperity. The toad is said to live only in the phase of the moon which it swallows during the eclipse. Quite interesting. So that little guy is going to have a nice nice place. Now in some of the previous videos that I've um, said you usually have quite a few frogs around here. So frogs and toads seem to, to follow me around. Not so much the toads but the frogs definitely seem to follow me around. So the second place that I went to was uh, a little store in Burragoon shopping centre which is in Burragoon, Western Australia and um, it's called uh, Sultan's Treasure and it's a small little um, store kind of not tucked away but it's in the it's in the 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 end of the shopping center that um, isn't as high-end as the other side of the shopping center let's say and um, it's a lovely little store and they were having a 50% off so I hope they don't go under um, but um, uh, if you get to see this this video in time then then please go and have a look because they have some wonderful little little bits and pieces now a lot of the stuff there um, as you could probably tell by the name of the store is Turkish and they have um, lots of handmade bits and pieces now some of the first bits that I got with these these lovely little bowls now they're all handmade and each one is different so you have a look inside and you can see that you know, it's got lovely texture and each one because they're all handmade are going to be unique they're not going to be exactly the same because that's that's what happens with handmade you can't 
replicate exactly each thing. So you have the little sorry, oh that one doesn't have it. There we go. This one has the little handmade. Let's see if you can see that. But they're just wonderful little little bowls that you can put little bits of incense in. You can put little you can even put food items in there. Nice little offering bowls if that's the way you want to go, but the small little things. And these were I think five dollars each. Not even that. I think they're about two dollars, three dollars each. But they're all very, very nice. And you have big ones and small ones. Uh, I also got this. Now I got quite a few and I gave I gave a few to uh, some of my ladies. Um, but this here, which I thought was really nice. Now this is to ward off the evil eye. And I will be putting this one on my computer bag. And I also like this because it has here the snake, two twisted snakes. So you can see that the eye is always looking around, making sure that there's no evil. <laughs> okay. And then I also got this a large one and it's got a nice little hole in the top so I can make my own one of these large one and place it in my home and have it as a, as a nice decoration and at the same time it's got its same function which will be to to repel um, the evil eye um, now a little bit of bit of information on this which I got from the store um, is that this is called a Nazar um, and it's uh, protection and it's known to protect the the evil eye um, protects the owner from jealousy and envy um, of others and keeps the owner safe from negative energy intentionally or unintentionally given by others it's believed to be a symbol that dates back to over 5,000 years. It can be found within the major religions and hundreds of cultures all around the globe. So you hang this in your home, in your car, or wear it on yourself to bring the protection, luck, and wealth that millions believe in. So I thought that was quite nice. And this here is quite big. Again, you can see it's my hands. And that was only $5. So I thought that that was really quite nice. And it gives me a chance to, to uh, make some extra bits and witchy pieces that I can add a little bit more energy and power to that. But I thought it was quite nice. So this, that's the uh, Sultan's Treasures. Now I'll put that information down below and hopefully you can give it a little look at because there's quite a few little treasures that you can have, very inexpensive, that you can use on your altar or you can have um, just about your person that are just as witchy and don't have to have pentacles ablazing, but um, just adds a little bit of magic and mystery into some of your daily life. So I hope you enjoyed that and um, I will be doing another video very soon where I'll be using some of these quartz crystals uh, in a little little spell. So um, stay tuned and um, merry meet, merry part and merry meet again. Blessed be. Send that beautiful energy up into the heavens. It's another very powerful cleansing incense that's often used by witches is dragon's blood. Dragon's blood, when it goes onto the chart,